digging around it, brushing away the mud, pulled it out, and there was this giant stone head gazing back at him with these obsidian eyes. And so this became quite a sensation at the time. Deep in the steaming Amazon jungle, an astonishing discovery recently emerged from remote excavations that has left archaeologists stunned and scrambling for answers. Massive earthworks, including miles of defensive trench networks, mysterious handmade artworks, and strange ritual artifacts of ancient civilizations. The more scientists uncover, the more questions multiply. Who crafted these mysterious sculptures? What purpose did they serve? And what ancient civilization did they represent? Join us as we uncover these discoveries buried deep in the Amazon jungle that scientists can't find an explanation for. Number 1. The Curious Case of the Olmec Civilization, an Ancient Mystery Our story begins in the jungles of southern Mexico in the 1800s. Archaeologists and adventurers found huge stone heads with strange features sticking out of the dense vegetation. These heads seem to hold ancient secrets sparking a long quest to learn about their mysterious creators, the Olmecs. At that time, archaeology was becoming a serious science instead of just a hobby. Museums and universities realized that to understand ancient societies, they needed to reconstruct everything about them, from their buildings to their beliefs. Ancient Mexico was a perfect place to study, offering insights into civilizations even older than the famous Maya and Aztecs. Explorers like Jose Melgar were the first to find these giant heads in Mexico's hot coastal areas. But early scholars couldn't figure out where they came from, guessing they might be from Ethiopia or even aliens. Without more information, the heads remained puzzling, overshadowed by better-known civilizations. It wasn't until dedicated experts like Matthew Sterling came along and started digging that they began to uncover the real story. In the first half of the 20th century, archaeologists hacked through dense jungles and dug into ancient mounds, searching for clues about the Olmecs. They found more of the giant heads and signs of a once thriving society at places like San Lorenzo and Tres Zapotes along Mexico's Gulf Coast. As archaeologists dug deeper, they uncovered more than just giant heads in southern Mexico. They found ceremonial platforms, fancy homes, and valuable items like pottery and jade. This painted a new picture of the Olmecs, showing them as leaders in culture, art, and building by 1200 BCE. They lived in Mexico's humid areas and had a big impact, but then something mysterious happened, and they faded away, leaving behind fascinating clues about their skills and influence. For archaeologists in the 20th century, uncovering the secrets of the Olmecs became a fascinating challenge. They wanted to learn more about who the Olmecs were and what they achieved as Mesoamerica's mother civilization. Through careful digging and scientific methods, the next generation of researchers began to reveal many of the Olmecs' hidden secrets. Number 2. New Revelations Emerge from Olmec Heartland as scientific exploration of the mysterious Olmec civilization picked up pace in the mid-1900s, attention turned to a remote site with great potential, San Lorenzo, nestled near Mexico's Gulf Coast. Archaeologists like Matthew Sterling believed it could hold valuable clues about this ancient culture. But San Lorenzo was huge, spanning several square kilometers, making extensive excavations seem daunting. Instead of randomly digging, Sterling's team focused on specific spots identified through earlier surveys. These areas showed signs of past activity and were likely to contain important structures and artifacts revealing Olmec secrets. By carefully planning their digs in confined zones, they could methodically uncover layers of history, documenting everything they found for further study. This method paid off quickly. Clearing away thick vegetation revealed the outlines of pyramids and fancy homes similar to those found at Maya sites. Beneath the surface, they discovered treasures like jade jewelry, stone tools, and early writing carved into monuments. Most intriguingly, they found numerous giant heads, some of which had been violently toppled in the past. What catastrophe led to the downfall of this once-thriving Olmec center 
leaving its remains buried until now. As excavations continued, a more incredible picture of the early Olmec achievements began to emerge. The alignment of buildings with astronomical events suggested an advanced understanding of the cosmos. Specific areas dedicated to different crafts showed a high level of specialization, while the use of rare obsidian from faraway places hinted at extensive trade networks. The massive earthworks, involving the movement of millions of cubic feet of soil and clay, indicated the ruler's ability to mobilize a large workforce, a hallmark of complex societies. These groundbreaking discoveries at San Lorenzo amazed archaeologists, confirming the Olmec's importance and revealing their early sophistication in Mesoamerica's history. However, despite these insights, Matthew Sterling felt that there were still unanswered questions about the Olmec ruler's power, the true center of their authority, and why San Lorenzo declined. Building on the progress made at San Lorenzo, attention turned to another promising Olmec site in the southeast, La Venta. Unlike the low-lying terrain of San Lorenzo, La Venta was situated on an island rising above the coastal plain of western Tabasco. Despite its challenging location, between rivers and swamps prone to flooding, La Venta became a hub of Olmec activity during its cultural peak from 900 to 400 BCE, as indicated by radiocarbon dating. In the 1950s, archaeologists Philip Drucker and Robert Heiser were drawn to La Venta because of its unique setting and its ruins, which hinted at ongoing advancements in Olmec civilization, unlike the eventual collapse seen at San Lorenzo. At the heart of La Venta was a towering earthen pyramid that dominated the ceremonial area, evolving from simpler structures into a spectacular cone reaching over 100 feet tall. Drucker's team meticulously excavated within these architectural features, tracing their construction phases and changing purposes over time. The Great Pyramid in particular provided insights into the gradual advancements of the Olmecs. Earlier substructures supported smaller elite residences, which were ritually buried and enclosed during later expansions. This sequence of gradual enlargements suggested that La Venta's rulers commanded increasingly larger labor forces for ambitious projects as their influence expanded across the region. Coupled with La Venta's strategic location on an island along important trade routes, the social and economic foundations of Olmec power became clearer. Beyond monumental architecture, the excavations at La Venta revealed exquisite artifacts reflecting the flourishing of Olmec arts and beliefs at the peak of their civilization. Intricately carved jade objects and statuettes showcased the skills of artisans. Massive carved thrones and stone slabs depicted themes of rulership and mythology. Most notably, several colossal heads were unearthed, likely representing rulers towering over their subjects. Alongside abundant seasonal offerings found at the head's original locations, these discoveries indicated La Venta's role as a dynamic economic, political, and ceremonial center during its zenith. Through their meticulous excavation and documentation, Drucker and Heiser established the significance of La Venta in understanding the Olmec past. Their pioneering work revealed La Venta's importance in expressing fundamental aspects of Olmec culture, including monumental engineering feats and cultural beliefs. However, the question of what led to the eventual decline of Olmec civilization remained unanswered. Number 3. Untangling the Complexity of Olmec Life and Beliefs As archaeologists dug deeper into major Olmec sites like San Lorenzo and La Venta during the mid-1900s, they uncovered more layers of cultural complexity. They aimed to move beyond simplistic views of ancient peoples as primitive, recognizing instead their surprising sophistication. The Olmecs were not just craftsmen or builders of temples, they were fully rounded individuals with a rich cultural heritage. Through meticulous excavation of living areas and garbage dumps, middens, archaeologists reconstructed fundamental aspects of Olmec life. At San Lorenzo, they found evidence of residential areas mixed among ceremonial spaces. Debris like broken pottery, 
food remains, hearths, and holes for posts, revealed a village layout based on agriculture and daily living, not just grand monuments. Studying pottery technology provided insights into Olmec aesthetics and practical needs. The shapes of vessels, bowls, jars, and figurines hinted at their use for cooking, storage, and rituals. Innovative decorating techniques like slip and resist showed artistic skill. When combined with the analysis of recurring motifs in sculptures made from jade or basalt, a picture emerged of symbolic traditions linked to beliefs and ideology. The mortuary analysis provided another window into understanding Olmec's spiritual beliefs about the afterlife and their complex worldview. At Laventa's ceremonial center, Archaeologists uncovered rows of buried offerings surrounding the Great Pyramid. These offerings included small basalt heads and intricate serpentine pavements. Alongside evidence of human sacrifice, these findings suggest a highly organized state religion centered around mythical deities and divine rulers, granting legitimacy to authority. Skeletal studies further revealed social complexity through variations in tomb placement, body adornments, and treatment. Elites were distinguished by their access to carved jade ornaments and finely crafted garments, indicating their elevated status. However, consistent dental modification and cranial reshaping across social classes suggested a shared ethnic identity. Together, these mortuary findings shed light on concepts of birthrights, ritual practices, and beliefs about the afterlife. By examining economic activities, settlement patterns, belief systems, and social relations, Olmec archaeology moved beyond mere fascination with monumental stone heads or enigmatic rituals. Instead, it revealed vibrant village life with bustling markets and skilled craftsmen, religious ceremonies honoring revered deities, and the intimate rituals of families celebrating important life events. This deeper understanding allows for a fuller appreciation of Olmec society across the ages. While archaeology shed light on many aspects of Olmec society and culture, certain discoveries raised intriguing questions. Carved cosmetic enhancements found on recovered skeletons, such as unusual dental mutilation and cranial elongation, were widespread among Olmec groups regardless of age, sex, or status. What drove these dramatic bodily alterations? And did they reflect deeper beliefs or ideologies guiding Olmec civilization? Genetic analysis of remains provided potential clues. DNA testing revealed traces of trans-Pacific contact predating Columbus's arrival, with markers resembling Australian Aboriginal populations found in some Olmec burials. Did occasional interaction or even migration from Oceania influence the development of a hybrid ideology that manifested physically? Further detailed study of skeletal remains may help unravel this persistent mystery surrounding the embodiment of Olmec's identity and worldviews. Further research is essential to clarify significant changes in settlement patterns and population dynamics throughout the entire span of Olmec dominance from 1400 BCE to 400 BCE, as determined by radiocarbon dating. What climatic variations or social factors led to the rise and eventual decline of major centers like San Lorenzo and La Venta? How did the spread to outlying areas and the emergence of smaller competing centers like Tres Zapotes reflect the political dynamics among Olmec elites? Future investigations can build upon previous excavations to piece together this epic narrative with greater precision. Thanks to the dedication of generations of archaeologists and scientists, the mystery surrounding the Olmecs is gradually unraveling, revealing an extraordinary ancient civilization. No longer seen as mere anomalies, they are now recognized as foundational figures in Mesoamerica's cultural heritage. With many unanswered questions still awaiting resolution through ongoing research, the end of the story of the Olmecs seems far from imminent. Number 4. Monumental Findings Reshaping Perspectives as archaeological digs advanced across the Olmec heartland in the mid-20th century, 
to a number of astonishing archaeological discoveries made over the last century pertaining to the very mysterious origins of Mesoamerican history. Certain discoveries had the potential to significantly reshape our understanding of this ancient civilization. Instead of merely adding to museum collections, some findings served as key pieces in placing the Olmecs within the broader context of early Mesoamerican societies. One of the most visually striking breakthroughs came from the discovery of colossal stone sculptures at sites like San Lorenzo, La Venta, and Tres Zapotes. Initially, fragments of these giant heads puzzled scholars with their unfamiliar features. However, as multiple intact specimens were systematically uncovered, their significance became clearer. The sheer size of these sculptures indicated immense human effort, their consistent style suggested mass production, and their widespread distribution hinted at a complex society capable of mobilizing substantial resources. It became evident that these giant heads were not random creations by casual artisans. Their scale suggested the presence of well-organized political entities operating within a broader ideological framework. However, questions persisted. Were they representations of deified rulers meant to inspire reverence, or symbols of political domination over communities coerced into quarrying and transporting such massive blocks? Further discoveries provided additional insights. Alongside the monolithic heads, Archaeologists found altars, thrones, and stelae adorned with intricate relief carvings depicting human figures dressed in ceremonial attire and engaged in rituals or processions. These carvings conveyed a consistent theme of authority and rulership, suggesting narratives of dynastic continuity or divine endorsement. When considered alongside the alignments of sculptures and architecture with solstice and equinox patterns, it became apparent that these were part of elaborate visual programs designed to impress and convey messages about elite power rooted in cosmological principles. More than mere artwork, these carvings served as enduring declarations affirming the existing social order. Additionally, other discoveries revealed that the Olmecs were not only skilled sculptors, but also adept engineers capable of executing complex construction projects on a monumental scale. The most remarkable example of this engineering prowess was the Great Pyramid Complex at La Venta, which soared to over 30 meters in height, showcasing the Olmec's mastery of monumental architecture. The construction of La Venta's principal pyramid was a monumental undertaking, requiring an estimated 2 million cubic feet of earth and clay, transported using baskets. This project demanded significant administrative oversight, including managing the supply logistics, assigning labor tasks, and ensuring quality control to ensure its success. Furthermore, burials associated with earlier phases of the pyramid's construction provided intriguing hints that its continuous expansion mirrored the increasing authority of the elite over successive generations. In the end, the towering structure of La Venta's principal pyramid stood as a remarkable testament to the organized workforce and stable hierarchy necessary to turn such a grand vision into reality over the course of decades. More than any individual sculpture, this massive undertaking demonstrated the emergence of Olmec chiefdoms as formidable proto-states along the southern Gulf Coast of Mesoamerica. Number 5. New Techniques Shed Light on an Endangered Legacy as Olmec archaeology progressed from its early stages in the 20th century to becoming a more rigorous scientific discipline by the 1960s, it encountered some challenges. Researchers realized that fully understanding the complexity of this foundational Mesoamerican civilization required advanced techniques and collaborative approaches that crossed disciplinary boundaries. While excavations continued to provide cultural materials for analysis, laboratory methods became increasingly important for deeper interpretation. Developments in radiocarbon dating allowed for the construction of more detailed chronologies, tracing the timing of construction phases or periods of occupation. This provided crucial context for understanding trends in settlement patterns, artistic styles, and interactions with other cultures. At the same time, osteology advances, the study of bones, 
and DNA, profiling opened up new avenues for understanding ancient lives. Analysis of bone chemistry revealed individual life histories, including migration patterns and dietary habits through isotopic signatures. DNA sequencing allowed researchers to uncover genetic connections, suggesting trade, intermarriage or migration with distant populations in Central America or even Polynesia. These advancements helped researchers gain a deeper insight into the lives and interactions of the Olmec people. Ecology also provided valuable tools for understanding the environmental factors that drove societal changes among the Olmecs. Techniques such as sediment coring and palynology reconstruction helped to uncover clues about climate fluctuations and changes in land use throughout Olmec history. When combined with settlement archaeology, this approach sheds light on the complex relationship between environmental conditions and cultural developments. In the 1960s, archaeologist Michael Coe led pioneering work at San Lorenzo, where his team extensively surveyed and mapped the sprawling site in central Mexico using aerial photography and surface collecting. This effort greatly clarified the layout of the urban core and its developmental sequence, facilitating comparisons with other Olmec centers. Coe's innovative approach went beyond traditional excavation methods. By collecting deep soil cores across San Lorenzo, he uncovered environmental evidence that may explain the site's abandonment. A layer of sterile ash suggested a massive volcanic eruption, which could have devastated the Olmec heartland, potentially leading to the collapse of the site. It was through this creative and unconventional thinking that the catastrophe emerged as a likely explanation for San Lorenzo's mysterious downfall. As our understanding of Olmec history becomes more sophisticated, their extraordinary cultural legacy faces increasing threats from modern challenges. Climate change, with rising humidity levels and more frequent tropical storms, is accelerating the erosion of crucial earthen mounds and monuments. For instance, at La Venta, the majestic Great Pyramid has significantly decreased in height over recent decades. Additionally, much of the Olmec heritage remains unexcavated or poorly documented, putting it at risk of being lost before it can be properly studied. Moreover, encroaching development, including activities like oil drilling, mining, road construction, and urban expansion, poses a significant threat to these precious archaeological sites. Mexico's archaeological agency, INAH, struggles to balance preservation efforts with the pressure for resource extraction and infrastructure development. Unfortunately, political priorities often override scientific recommendations, as witnessed in many indigenous sites in the Gulf Lowlands. Furthermore, local communities often lack education about Olmec's achievements, leading to a lack of public appreciation and support for stronger conservation measures. Looking to the future, the outlook for preserving Olmec heritage is mixed. While technological advances like LIDAR surveys and ground-penetrating radar can accelerate mapping and analysis, without corresponding progress in establishing legal protections, improving site stewardship through outreach, and securing funding for conservation efforts, the next chapters of insight into Mesoamerica's mother culture may remain hidden. We owe it to the pioneers who uncovered these marvels to complete their unfinished work, ensuring that these key milestones in human achievement endure. The stakes are too high to risk squandering such a remarkable cultural treasure. Number 6. The Mysterious Olmecs, Mexico's First Civilization The Olmecs were the earliest major civilization in Mesoamerica. They started in Soconusco and later settled in the tropical lowlands of what is now Veracruz and Tabasco in Mexico. Some people think the Olmecs might have been influenced by nearby cultures like the Mokaya or Mixezoc. They thrived from around 1500 BCE to about 400 BCE, a time when Mesoamerica was taking shape. Before them, other cultures had been around since about 2500 BCE. But by 1600-1500 BCE, the early Olmec culture emerged centered around the San Lorenzo Tenochtitlan site near the coast in southeast Veracruz. They were the first civilization in Mesoamerica and set the stage for those who came after them. 
Among other things, the Olmecs were into ritual bloodletting and played a game that would become super popular in Mesoamerica. You might have heard of it. It's the ball game. One thing they're really known for now is their art, especially those giant heads. We first got to know about the Olmecs through stuff collectors bought on the pre-Columbian art market in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Olmec art is considered some of the coolest stuff from ancient America. The word Olmec means rubber people in Nahuatl, which was the language of the Aztecs. But here's the thing. The Aztecs were around 2,000 years after the Olmec culture disappeared. The Olmecs got their name from the fact that they were pretty into rubber. They'd get latex from rubber trees and mix it with juice from a local vine to make rubber as far back as 1600 BCE. In Nahuatl, the Olmecs were called Olmeca. The word Olmec means rubber people in Nahuatl, which was the language of the Aztecs. But here's the thing. The Aztecs were around 2,000 years after the Olmec culture disappeared. The Olmecs got their name from the fact that they were pretty into rubber. They'd get latex from rubber trees and mix it with juice from a local vine to make rubber as far back as 1600 BCE. In Nahuatl, the Olmecs were called Olmeca. Back in the day, explorers and archaeologists thought the ruins and stuff they found were made by the same people the Aztecs called the Olmecs. Turns out, they were wrong. The Olmecs were actually way older, but the name stuck around anyway. We're not sure what the Olmecs called themselves, but some ancient accounts refer to them as Tamoanchan. Another name sometimes used for them nowadays is Tanasalome, which means mouth of the jaguar. The Olmec heartland is found in the Gulf Lowlands, where the civilization expanded after its early beginnings in Soconusco, Veracruz. This region is marked by swampy areas interspersed with low hills, ridges, and volcanoes. The Sierra de los Tuxtlas, rising sharply in the north along the Gulf of Mexico's Bay of Campeche, is a prominent feature. Here, the Olmecs built permanent city temple complexes at San Lorenzo Tenochtitlan, La Venta, Tres Zapotes, and Laguna de los Cerros, establishing the first Mesoamerican civilization, which thrived from 1400 to 400 BCE. The origins of Olmec civilization were traditionally thought to date back to around 1400 to 1200 BCE. However, discoveries of Olmec remains ritually deposited at the El Manati Shrine near the San Lorenzo Tenochtitlan sites push this timeline back to at least 1600 to 1500 BCE. It appears that the Olmec culture had its roots in the early farming cultures of Tabasco, which emerged between 5100 and 4600 BCE. These early cultures shared similar agricultural practices and technologies with the later Olmec civilization. The Olmec culture fully emerged within San Lorenzo Tenochtitlan around 1400 BCE. The development of this civilization was supported by the local ecology of fertile alluvial soil and the transportation network provided by the Coatzacoalcos River Basin. This environment, comparable to other ancient centers of civilization like the Nile, Indus, and Yellow River Valleys, and Mesopotamia, encouraged dense populations, leading to the rise of an elite class. This elite class created a demand for symbolic and sophisticated luxury goods, defining Olmec culture. Many of these luxury items, made from materials like jade, obsidian, and magnetite, were sourced from distant locations, indicating that early Olmec elites had access to an extensive trading network in Mesoamerica. The most prized jade came from the Mataguia River Valley in eastern Guatemala, while Olmec obsidian was traced to sources in the Guatemala highlands and Puebla, located 200 to 400 kilometers away, respectively. The state of Guerrero, particularly its early Mescala culture, appears to have played a significant role in the early history of Olmec culture. Olmec-style artifacts have been found in some parts of Guerrero, dating back earlier than those in the Veracruz Tabasco area. Artifacts from the Amuco Abelino site in Guerrero suggest dates as early as 1530 BCE, while the city of Teopantecuanitlan in Guerrero is also noteworthy in this context. The first major Olmec center, San Lorenzo, 
was pretty much deserted around 900 BCE, right around the time La Venta started becoming a big deal. Something big happened around 950 BCE too. Lots of monuments in San Lorenzo got wrecked. People used to think it was maybe a revolt or even an invasion. But nowadays, it seems like changes in the environment, like rivers shifting course, might have been behind the move. After San Lorenzo fell out of favor, La Venta became the main Olmec hub, holding it down from about 900 BCE until around 400 BCE when it was abandoned. La Venta kept the Olmec culture going strong with some seriously impressive shows of power and riches. The Great Pyramid. There was the biggest structure in Mesoamerica back then. Even today, after 2,500 years of wearing down, it still stands 34 meters tall in the flat landscape. Deep inside La Venta, there were some fancy offerings buried there, like 1,000 tons of smooth serpentine blocks, big mosaic floors, and at least 48 different gifts of polished jade stuff, pottery, little statues, and shiny mirrors made of hematite. But the thing is, scholars are still trying to figure out why the Olmec culture eventually faded out. It happened sometime between 400 and 350 BCE, and we're still not exactly sure why. Number 7. What about the Toltecs, Aztecs, and Mayans? The Toltecs, Aztecs, and Mayans were three big-time civilizations in Mexico and Central America before the Spanish showed up in the 1500s. Starting with the Toltecs were running the show in Central Mexico from the 10th to 12th centuries AD. Their capital was at Tula, and they took some cues from the earlier Teotihuacan crowd. The Toltecs were all about architecture, art, and city planning. Their pyramid temples were famous for their carvings of warriors and their god, Quetzalcoatl. Even after their empire fell, their influence stuck around, especially their building techniques. Next up, the Aztecs. They were the kings of central Mexico from the 14th to 16th centuries. They built on what the Toltecs started, setting up shop in the Valley of Mexico and making Tenochtitlan their capital city around 1325 AD. This city was on an island in Lake Texcoco and was a powerhouse. The Aztecs were into all sorts of stuff, architecture, astronomy, agriculture, you name it. They were big on demanding tribute from other groups, which often included things like goods and sacrificial victims. Oh, and they were known for their human sacrifices too. Lastly, the Mayans were no slouches either. They were all over southern Mexico and parts of Central America from about 2000 BC to the 16th century AD. The Mayans were into building massive cities with huge pyramids, fancy calendars, and writing systems. They were pretty advanced in agriculture, trade, and science, making significant contributions to lots of fields. The Mayans were on another level when it came to building up their civilization, kicking it off around 2000 BC and keeping the party going until about 900 AD. They were chilling in the Yucatan Peninsula, Guatemala, Belize, and parts of Honduras, living the good life in those lush lowlands. These guys were like the Renaissance people of the Americas, doing astronomy, math, making calendars, building cool stuff, and making art that still blows minds today. At first, they were just hanging out in small villages, but by 400 BC, they were like, let's level up, and started building city-states. Tikal was one of their hotspots, with massive temples, palaces, and ball courts for their games. They were also big on writing, carving hieroglyphs like nobody's business. And they knew how to farm, feeding millions with their intensive agriculture. But then, around 900 AD, things went a bit south, and their major cities kind of fell apart. But don't worry, their descendants kept the flame alive, keeping their knowledge of the stars, art, and other cultural stuff going strong. Just like the Aztecs, just like the Aztecs, the Mayans were into their gods and calendars, and they didn't mind getting a little bloody with rituals like bloodletting and human sacrifices. What is actually cool is that the Toltecs, Aztecs and Mayans were all kind of in on the same gig, passing around their knowledge of astronomy, art, and architecture like it was a hot potato. They all had their languages and gods, and they weren't shy about giving offerings to keep things running smoothly. 
And even though they each had their own special sauce, like the Toltec's artsy flair, the Aztec's herbal remedies, and the Mayan's math wizardry, their influence is still felt today in Mexican and Central American culture. You can see it in the way people talk, eat, build stuff, make clothes, and connect with the spiritual world. It's like they left a big old footprint that's still here with us. Thanks for watching. Like this video and subscribe to our channel for more updates. And while you're still here, click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos.